So here we are again, uh, week five of, of, of Easter, um, but also probably the, what is this, what week is this? Seventh our, or eighth week, I think. Of, of our of quarantine. Our quarantine, yeah. okay. I want to say a few things first about uh, the reopening of Mass, which the bishop is discussing even now. Uh, uh, and the kinds of things that we need to do to prepare for that reopening. Uh, one of them is uh, um, we need to begin to, uh, to find a mask that we can live with, you know what I mean, uh, for, the, for the next few, few months anyway. Uh, something that's colorful, maybe, that's, you know, that's, that you're kind of proud of wearing, um, but something that we will wear whenever masses begin, because masses will be required of anyone who attends uh, the Eucharistic Assembly. Um, at Christ the King, because we have a large field, we will uh, attempt to celebrate Mass outdoors as often as possible. Uh, we will have tents, uh, as, we would, as we have done for the Fall Festival. And, uh, and I would invite you to bring blankets and things like that, or your chairs, and uh, and uh, we will make sure that uh, on the days when the weather is nice and the field is nice, that uh, masses will be held on the field. Uh, from what I hear, that's that's really the best of all options. We also are very fortunate at Christ the King to have windows in our church that open, and so even when we gather as a community in the church, the windows, as I like often, the windows will be open, and that too is is kind of a um, um, a benefit. Uh, the first gatherings, I would like, uh, at the very first gatherings when Mass opens, I would like seniors uh, and those who may be compromised to be the very first to, um, uh, to celebrate with us. Um, those, that gathering will be inside the church, of course, and, uh, and we'll find a time that is suitable for, for everyone. We'll, if you have a, night, um, a preference, whether it be in the morning or in the afternoon or the afternoon, uh, let me know. But um, if not, we'll set a time that we think is is suitable for uh, our seniors and and for those who might be compromised. And, uh, and so you will be the first, the first to, to to gather with us. And then Father Fawn and I and the staff will decide uh, kind of what the other times uh, of masses throughout the week will look like. We still ask that those who are who are compromised in any way, or those who live with those who are compromised, those who have uh, small children who can't wear masks, and, and, uh, and many others who are uncomfortable joining with a large group, that you absent yourselves from the Eucharist Assembly for, for, for a while until we can kind of sort this whole thing. And uh, so with that, I think my thought is that the numbers will uh, regulate themselves. Um, if we need more masses, we'll do that, but I don't think we will need more masses. Uh, but we'll play it as uh, as it comes. So seniors first, uh, find a mask that you can live with. Um, we'll ask that you bring blankets to the outdoor field, where we'll have um, Eucharist outside as much as possible. And, uh, and remember that the dispensation which the bishop uh, has given, I think goes through June, and probably, if need be, we could even extend that um, for those who are uncomfortable throughout the summer. Um, I can ask him to do that if you need. Um, but if you have any questions, you know, let me know. Mm -hmm. and let's read the Gospel. <clears throat> this is a reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, 
and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and still you do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else... Believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This, re- this reading... Uh, comes up from time to time during funerals, and uh, and in fact, it, it often comes up at some of the most difficult funerals, at least in my priesthood uh, that I've had. Uh, the funerals of, uh, of those who've taken their own lives, funerals of young people who have died, and uh, it on one level seems appropriate because. Because as I look out, as I've looked out at the congregation that's gathered for the for this celebration, uh, in, in those particular kinds of funerals, I can you can see the sadness, you can feel it, in fact, and uh, and when the gospel is read, you know the first words, "Do not let your hearts be troubled." It it is initially consoling because it is because of the words of Christ and the words that uh, that. Uh, it seemed to go to heart, but then, but as I sit in my in the presider's chair listening to this, and I look out at the congregation gathered for this funeral service, uh, the question always comes to me: You know, how can our hearts not be troubled? You know, here there is a you know a two-year-old uh, child dead before us, or um, or a young man who has taken his life. A young woman who's taken her life, and um, and their parents on the front row or loved ones who are weeping, uh, the friends and relatives all gathered are all holding their breath um, because of the um, the gravity kind of of the moment, you know. And the gospel that comes out is the word that's spoken is, "Do not let your hearts be troubled." Um, and so often, I think, uh, during the, the homily, I will begin there. You know, how can a heart stop be troubled? And then, um, and, I, and I think on, on this particular night as well, you know, with, with the Lord. So he, you know, he, they're sitting around, right, at this, uh, they're probably still around the table after supper, after, after Judas has run out, right? Yeah. And they're aware, at least somewhat aware, of what's about to happen. The, no, maybe it's not so clear. Uh, and I, and I, they're frightened, don't you think, a little? Mm. I mean, the, the thought that this man could be leaving, and in, in whatever way he's leaving, uh, um, this is someone who, the last few years, has been has gotten them out of some really tough circumstances, has spread thousands in the middle of no place, and, and done things like that. And all of a sudden he's leaving. You know, how do you, how do you think about his leaving without being troubled about it? Because, because you've not been able to do anything without him before, <laughs> and now you gotta, you know, the time is coming when he's not gonna be there. I, I... You know, when Jesus says, "Do not let your hearts be troubled," uh, what the text does not say is, it doesn't say, "Don't feel anything." It doesn't say, "Be without emotion." Uh, be passive or, or, or stoic or um, 
And there's, I think, a curious paradox in that those who are able to accept what they feel um, and allow space for those feelings within themselves um, can actually be more in touch with, with the depths of the situation than people who, who at the very hint of sadness or anger, uh, fly into a frenzy or retreat and push against it. Um, in the same way that those who are able to um, you know, sort of eat temperately can often taste food better um, because they're not simply giving themselves over to, um, to everything. And so, at least to my reading, when Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, he's not saying when troubling things happen, don't feel anything. Um, but rather, you're going to feel the trouble. Don't let that blind you to the deeper reality of what's going on. Um, don't let your grief so overwhelm you that you're unable to feel love anymore. Um, don't let your anger so overwhelm you uh, that you will lash out at, at, at just anybody. Um, and yet, uh, that's, a, that's still a tall order. Yes. Right? Oh, certainly. Uh, because, um, you know, when we say don't let... I don't, I'm not sure that I have the power to do that, which is why I think that the next sentence is uh, is important, and that is when he says, "You have faith in God, have faith also in me." So, um, you know, as you were saying, don't don't kind of let it fly when 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 these things happen. Uh, the the control that's needed, or at least the the, the peace that's needed, is in this our grounding ourselves in the faith that we've had in God, and which we ought to also have in this in the friend Jesus who, yeah. who's there with them. I mean, that that's, I think that's where the power comes from, just right. kind of kind of throwing ourselves into into believing. Okay, you know, things will all will be well. I, I trust you. I trust Him. You know that that what is that his words are true, uh, and uh, and so I will give myself over to that trust, and that, that I think that's there's a power in that that keeps us from kind of spinning out of control in, in, in the presence of um, the least bit of um, uh, sadness or mourning or whatever it happens to be. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know to to move ahead in the reading, that's why Jesus claimed that the way to the Father, or the way to life, that it's a person, not a technique of managing one's emotions, um, not even a particular worldview that says, you know, what you're feeling isn't real. The fact that the way is a person confirms what you just said, which is the only thing that gives us the ability to stand in the midst of everything that the world throws at us is love. Is our love that is grounded in not again an idea, but in this living person and this this vital relationship, and it's only these relationships um, that can hold us when the storms of life are tossing us about. Um, nothing else, I think, really really suffices. Yes, and and also like the uh, the doing follow being the being. So so I said like if you believe in me. You will do the work that I that I do. So if we believe in God, and in the second sentence you just mm -hmm. point out, <clears throat> do not let your heart be troubled. You have faith in God, so He assumed that you already have that. Have faith also in me, and if you believe me, do what I I, I did, do what I do. So love and love is not like just. <clears throat> uh, a thought or a way of thinking, but it is an action. Mm. An action. It keeps it keep us moving. You know, and how much, uh, they have a lot to go on in placing their faith in Him. Mm. Um, as I said, this is toward the end, of the, the last third of the Gospel of John, right? So, uh, uh, and they've, they've seen Him do many things, His actions, uh, and, uh, and and in situations where, but for his presence there, they probably couldn't have got out of them, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I find in my own life that that um, that that's that's how at least my faith works. 
I, I find myself in, in circumstances presently, and if I remember, I think back, you know, on, on things that have happened in the past and how the Lord has moved me, you know, through difficult circumstances. And then it gives me a peace in the present time, in mm -hmm. the present moment, because, uh, because if he was there then, helping me then, I have every reason to believe that it will be here, here now, you know. Uh, and I think perhaps that is something to what he's saying. You have faith in God, have faith also in me, and in the works which I've done, mm -hmm. you know, the, thing, the things which you've seen, the act of love which has been so manifest in, in, in my life and in all the things that we've seen together over the last two and a half, three years, whatever it's been. And, uh, um, but actions, right? Um, yeah, the, the way of Jesus that they've seen is a way that requires a response compassionate response to to others um, and sort of grounding in God but one thing that Jesus doesn't do is he doesn't make the evils of the world go away whatever whatever he is about um, in his mission um, is not just to to make everything better and I think the call to trust in him you know, when he says have faith in God have faith also in me that is in what I am doing um, I think it can be difficult to trust you know, a process that we don't understand. Because if I were God, I would just wave my wand and, and, and make the power come back on. Uh, but God, in Jesus, doesn't do this. He responds to some things, but not everything. Um, and he certainly you know, doesn't respond to the, the powers that conspire to bring about his own death. Um, so there is still something of a mystery to, to this way. That, that confounds us, that requires not knowledge, which, which is what Thomas seems to want to know, but a kind of trust, um, to a kind of um, willingness to go where we don't understand. And, and that's making me thinking of the new movie, the, the cartoon movie of Disney Onward. Hmm. And uh, the, the, younger, the younger one is known for the uh, fearful and he afraid of everything but on the quest he had to cross in the invisible bridge and <laughs> and they did and, and the, the older brother tried to tie the rope around his uh, his waist so let him walk into like the invisible like abyss so he just keep walking the first one he fell oh. the second one he step on it. <laughs> it's gonna work. Mm. And then after a while, he, he developed that confidence, and the rope fell off, and he didn't know. And he asked him it's his brother, "It? Hey, are you still holding on the rope?" He said, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> but on the other end, not tied to his waist anymore. So, <laughs> so this is this is a movie. This is a. Sorry, I. <laughs> yeah, right. it yeah. just came out. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, okay. Disney yeah, Pixar, so. right? Yeah, so I just like spoil that already. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert! Right? Spoiler. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, but, so, yeah, but that's like the confidence of the, the something that we could not see, but it's required a trust hmm. in faith. We need to take that step, one step at a time. Yeah, and after all. We build up that faith. If we don't take that step, we never gonna move anywhere. There's a scene like that, of course, in uh, in in the end of the Last too. Crusade, yeah, oh, that's yeah, what I thought. He it. steps off. Uh, <laughs> he takes my breath away. Yeah, because you can't see the bridge, you right. know, and he steps out and it's there. Right, just, you know, it's camouflage. And, um, so, what, what do we make of this business um, when Philip says? Uh, master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus says to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and still you do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. So, I think it's the uh, manifestation of who Jesus is. He is God also, like the Trinity right there. 
not like fully as Father, Son, and Spirit, but He had everything as His God. So this is hard to understand because even if we want to be faithful Trinitarian Christians, Jesus is not the Father. You know, that's the first thing that, right. mm -hmm. yeah. that we profess in the creed. Well, second thing. Um, and yet, at the same time, to see, to see Jesus, if we're going to believe his words, is somehow to see the Father, or to see something of the Father, to see, uh, maybe again to, to stick with the Trinitarian language, whatever the Father and Son are sharing, which right. is which is God. But of course, we also can't see God. Okay. You know, God is not the kind of thing that one one sees. Um, but but this but, this could apply to us too, right? I mean, that is, I mean, to the extent that uh, that when someone sees us in our, you know, we who are baptized, uh, there is a sense in which they ought to be able to see the Father in our, in our actions, in our, yes. Yes. in our in our being, in our, in our way of living, yes. in our in the way that we put them at ease or not. Yes. You know, there's something of the divine which is seen or it's felt or sensed yes. in us or not, uh, and. Uh, so it's not so extraordinary, I think, it seems to me. Uh, I think that's right. And I think it would, it would help us all to recover you know, a word that has been used to describe this very sort of visible manifestation of God that we use all the time in our liturgy and when we pray the rosary, but we don't really talk about it. The word is glory. Right? The glory of God is sort of the manifestation of really how beautiful God is through all the signs of the created order. And so... You know, to, to recover that word and to say that you know, when the disciples see Jesus, they are seeing the glory of God. Huh. Um, but that glory often comes to us not as, as you know, the beauty of God. It's not always what we think of as beautiful. You know, in, in John, it's going to be the crucified Lord, who is the glory of God, because it's showing us the nature of God. Um, but I think you're right in saying you know, the, the vocation of the baptized is to have a life that is truly full of beauty, that, that displays the beauty not only of God, but of everything that God has made. Um, and that ought to be visible in the smallest things as well as the very biggest. Um, but that, that's as tall an order as do not let your hearts be troubled. <laughs> that is, let your very life be a sign of how beautiful and trustworthy God is and all that God has made. Um, when we have an entire order of the world that tells us, no, make it efficient, but don't make it beautiful. Or... or um, you know, make it successful, but not necessarily beautiful. And I see, like, in this, like, gospel, and then somehow it, it is our way of prayer. It's a prayer life. Mm. We're thinking when we are in trouble, we talk, when we talk directly with God, everything will be clear. And it's, it seems like the conversation with become weirder and weirder right, 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 after right. like, I don't know your way, I don't know where you're going. And then like, I am the way. And then, so, so as a father, you don't know me. You know? Yeah. It's just like, it's getting like more confused and like complex when we come into prayer. We, we thought like when we come into prayer, we might receive like consolation all the time and clear of what we try to understand. But no, it's... It, it pushing us into a, a deeper understanding and open us to uh, like the opportunity to know and to love God in hmm. a different way. So I think that's a way that we all experience in prayers too. So it's not just our life. And so we persevere. <laughs> yeah, one of the, the most famous um, treatises on prayer, um, you know, the, the early medieval text, The Cloud of Unknowing, describes this process and, and essentially you know the thrust of this text is as you are trying to learn how to pray you're gonna have to let go of your knowing mm -hmm. that is you, you have to pass through this cloud where you're knowing you know what it is that you understand that's not going to work so much the only thing that works is what's coming from the heart and to learn to pray from the heart um, is to learn to do without the clarity of, of you know without certainty but to still sort of pierce, pierce those clouds with love, 
you know, which, which for us is desire, is longing, um, wanting the God who doesn't seem to be here, who we can't actually see. Um, and I think that comes to, you know, this way of Jesus is, it's not, um, it's not necessarily a way of the head in which he comes to, to make us certain of all these things, because these guys are clearly not certain of much. Um, and again, it's not a method or a technique, but it is a, a desire, you know, and, and, and um, you know, longing for this God that he's calling Father and, and a willingness to surrender ourselves to that longing um, and to let, you know, that shared longing bring us into community. Uh, but it's not, it's not a way that's going to make things less, less complicated uh, in certain ways. In other ways, you know, when you know you want God and you don't want anything else, then things become very clear. Uh, but then you start losing your friends. <laughs> and, uh, on, on that point, you know, some of the, some of the mystics have, have made the same point, uh, not just in the cloud of unknowing, but uh, this business about prayer. Sometimes when we when we enter into prayer, we we have an objective. Do you know, do you know what I mean? I mean yeah, it, and uh, and probably the I think I've, I've said this before that the the objective of prayer, if, it, if there is an objective, is is the relationship itself. Mm -hmm. So it's not any kind of, it's not any result of it. Um, and as many mystics have pointed out, the uh, the it is our staying in that relationship and developing the relationship by conversation or silence uh, that um, strengthens the relationship. And then and then there's a there's an ability to see. We could not have seen before, just because we 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 we've done away with the knowing, as it were. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and now you're in a place of unknowing. Um, on Sunday, um, tomorrow in the afternoon at three o'clock, we will be Father Fine and I will um, uh, give the blessing with a blessed water um, to remind us of our baptism once again to those who would like to drive by the circle in the circle of the church and receive that blessing. Uh, now we're going to walk up to the church and uh, have the blessing for the water that we will use on Sunday. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our crea creation and the still greatness work of our redemption. 
graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also make water to in water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you free your people from slavery and quench their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaim the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the path, path of regeneration. Therefore, May this water be for us the memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, be pleased in your faithful love to bless this sort you have created, for it was you who commanded the prophet Elisha to cast salt into water, that impure water might be purified. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what, wherever this mixture of salt and water is sprinkled, every attack of enemy may be repulsed, and your Holy Spirit may be present to keep us safe at all times through Christ our Lord. 